I'm sorry? You know I'm going to ask. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> What's the question? What is that for? Pentecost. It's just not done yet. Okay, see? There you go. <laughs> now I've answered everybody's question. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Not quite done yet. Not quite done yet. It's I'm waiting until next week to see if it's, it's a done. work in progress, okay? <laughs> and next, she's got to paint 120 people piling out of that room. <laughs> You're going to have to multiply them in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good job, Sandy. It is. But it's not done yet. That's right. <clears throat> God's work's not done yet. Amen to that. We can see that in the world, can't we? Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> so, would you mind opening us up with prayer this morning? I would love to. Lord, you are such a wonderful and gracious God. Amen. It is such a pleasure and a joy to be able to serve you in your house with your people and we just come before you now and we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, <clears throat> God was sharing with me, uh, and, and he, I don't know how he talks to some, but sometimes he'll just give me a few words, right? And then he'll stop. It's up to me to figure out the rest. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of relate what I've been taught and what I've been showed in Scripture of where he wants me to go, right? And when I am in, in Bible study, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. And how we should get to know the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. So I got this I got this word. <clears throat> it's in Matthew 10 28. <clears throat> so it's Jesus teaching about the fear of God. Okay? I'm gonna start in 27. It says, Jesus is speaking, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. <clears throat> but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So we've been talking about in, in, in Bible study about the Holy Spirit, right? And who he actually is as part of the Trinity. And you know, I, he, when he was talking to me, it was, I said, Lord, how am I going to, how am I going to say this where they will understand what I'm trying to say? Okay. But Jesus came in the flesh, right? So our body, and we're made up in his image, which is Trinity, right? Right. We're made up in his image. Our, our body is, is just like Jesus coming in the flesh, all right? That's our body. That's our earthly body. That's what we see everybody in, right? Right. Okay? And then... But, but Jesus wasn't the only part of that, right? So he always talked about his father, did he not? Yeah. But his father gave to Jesus, he said, if, if you don't believe in him, you'll never see heaven, right? right. If you don't believe in the one I sent, which is Jesus, you will never see heaven, right? right. That's pretty much... Flat out. But then there's another part of God or the Father 
or Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit, right? Yep. And he said, when I leave, I'm going to send you a comforter. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? One that can live inside of you. Yes. Okay? Now just think about that. Amen. One that can live inside of you. So we have no reason, we have no excuse to be fearful. Amen. But we get that way, don't we? Mm -hmm. Sure. Right? But we, I mean, think about what's going on. Now he's living inside, right? If we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he said he's going to give us the Holy Spirit, right? right? Now, we might ask for the Holy Spirit to fill us, right? Which is a totally different thing than just getting saved, right? Yeah. Okay? So that's what he's talking about, that Lord, we need filled, Okay? Right. Because he knows that the flesh is still going to be weak. Yeah. Right? Even though we're saved, the flesh is going to get weak. So now he's saying, ask the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. To fill me. Yes. Right? Because I've said it before, we leak. <laughs> we do. That, look, we go out in the, in the world... And like I said, I've said this before, 10 minutes after we go out of here, we can get some of the best fights you've ever seen. <laughs> right? Is that not the truth? Isn't that where we live? Yeah. Right? Have you been talking to him? <laughs> Is that not where we live? So, you know, it, it's, it's real easy to walk in the flesh, right? Yes. So what Jesus is trying to remind us is to come back to me any time and as often as you can so I can fill you. Yes. Amen. Right? So I can fill you. I I there there <coughs> Father, I just speak to that fret and worry, Father. Mm. Somebody's going through fret and worry here this morning. Father, I just claim that you're healing down upon it right now, Lord. Yes, yes. There will to be no worry, Father. You are in control. We're going to have what you have, Father. Yes, yes. So, Father, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. <coughs> The Lord is very clear, okay? Mm -hmm. Some people believe that if you live a good life, okay? I did. And, and you might attend Sunday school or church on the holidays, you know, that you can make it to heaven, right? And he also said in his word, if you do not get born again, if you do not get born again, you will be in hell. Okay? That doesn't mean that there's a middle ground. Okay? Here's heaven. Here's hell. I can't stand in the middle and think I'm going to be okay. What does he tell us about lukewarm? Spit it out. Spit it out. He don't like it at all, does he? Amen. Pick one or the other, he says. Right. Pick heaven or hell. He'd much rather you pick heaven or hell, right? But when you pick hell, all right, he's still going to try to go after you. Mm -hmm. That's why he doesn't want you lukewarm. Because he don't know where you're at. You're just like, well, today I'm a little bit of this and today I'm a little bit of that. Well, that doesn't give anybody that's looking at me any help at all. Amen. Right? That's not showing the fruit that Jim talked about this morning, is it? If I'm, one day I'm here and one day I'm over here, somebody that's looking for me to, for, for some good fruit, they aren't going to find much there. Amen. The fruit's not going to be big and plump and juicy, right? It's going to be like... Is that really what Christianity is all about? 
You know? Is that what it's really about? Jesus came to give us more of that. More than, than what we sometimes show because we're weak in the flesh. He's asking us to, to come to the throne to get filled. To get filled with His Spirit. So when we flow over on somebody else, it's almost like it's contagious, right? Amen. That we can flow over. Now, are we going to be able to say that all the time? Come on. We should be able to. Yes. We should be able to, right? But do we? No. No, we don't. All right? There, there is people that need him in a way that they've never needed him before mm. right now. Okay? Our leaders in our country, we expect them to be better for us, for this country that God gave us. Yes. And we're going to expect that. We're going to expect him to move into their life. We're going to expect that. Okay? We want them saved. We want them giving glory to God. Amen. Right? Amen. That's our job. That's our job to expect that. We sung that song, did we not? What a the the this he gave us this land. God did. Amen. It was written in the original constitution. You can see it all throughout. I said original. We messed it up along the way. But if you look at the original and how it was written and how they penned every word, it was unbelievable. Right? It was almost like giving a revelation. <clears throat> in Matthew 16, 17, Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. <clears throat> and he has, he, he was taken to a point Right? He, he realized God asked, God spoke to him. Who do you think I am? Right? This is God speaking to him. Who do you really think I am? And he got a revelation. Right? And that's why Jesus said that. He got a revelation from God. Do you not want a revelation here this morning? Amen. Yes. Amen. Do you not want Jesus speaking to you and giving you a Amen. revelation for the rest of your life? Amen. Speaking a well word over you? Amen. Huh? Absolutely. Look, there's, there's days that I work and I do things that I probably <clears throat> know better than to do knowing that I have had an issue with my back. But if I start speaking the way I'm supposed to, I forget about that. And I forget about things that I might be limited to because God is limitless. Amen. Now, did he heal me or not? Yes. Now, he told me he did. So whose fault is it that I'm not believing it? <laughs> right? It's certainly not him. Right. He's gave me all kinds of promises in here. I know there were those guys before me and women before me that were healed, restored. Right? Yeah. Amen. He's given us promise after promise of that. <clears throat> He's talking about a faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? He's talking about when he's there. He, he is trying to get them to understand when he leaves. Okay. That he's going to send somebody. That's going to be there. Every minute of every day. Jesus was held to his flesh. Okay. When he was walking around on the earth. He was held to his flesh. They had to walk. And they didn't have planes. Right? 
my sister went down to see my my nephew and and uh, and she was flying down and and she flew back last night about ten o'clock. So she was going to be landing in Baltimore roughly, you know, in two hours. I mean, think about that. I mean, that's that's where it came from, you know. Well, try driving it once. Better yet, try walking it. <laughs> See how long it takes you, right? So Jesus was held to the earthly body, right? Now. When he got in the spirit, he could transcend time, couldn't he? Yes. Huh? Yep. But that's why when you look at the faith that, that some of these old some of these old heroes, I call them, some of those that they did speak the word only, Lord. You don't need to come. <coughs> right? Just speak the word for him. Now, did he not give us that same power? Absolutely. Yes. So, like I said before, well, there's a whole row of gifts up here. And his gift is, believe me, and speak it forth. Right? Amen. Yep. Believe me, and speak it forth. What do you have in your life that needs resurrected? Right? What do you have in your life that needs resurrected? What do you need God to do from, for you? He is willing and able to jump out on your behalf. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Yep. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, we can look at, we can look at what, we can look at the negative. Okay? The world is real good at that right now. Right? Right? The negative. That's a lot of what we see in the news, isn't it? But I believe he was written this to give us peace and comfort. Okay? When he says that, this is my opinion, so that's why I want you to test it. When I say it, I want you to test it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He's given us the keys right now. Right? Is evil up there? No. He's been bound. It's under the foot. Right? Yeah. So I'm not worried about evil because he's given me the keys to the kingdom of heaven. The heaven is a place that's unimaginable to us. Okay? Because everything that we're dealing with down here, there ain't none of that up there. Amen. Amen. There is no sickness. There's no disease. There's no hurt. There's no worry. There's no, there's no, there's none of that. Right? So he's given us the keys. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. So what he's saying to me, you test it. What he's saying to me is, I'm going to bind you up, Satan. Because he's going to back it. So when Satan comes to me and tries to attack me with this, that, or the other thing, or come to me and and say, well, you can't have this because of this, or you can't do this because of that. Just see what you did last week. You can't have none of that from God. No. That's not what he just said there. I can bind him up, and he'll back me on it. Right? Yeah. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So, now I can talk about good things, right? We're talking about heaven. The keys to the kingdom of heaven. Okay? I'm going to loose it, right? 
But if I speak bad stuff out of my mouth, I'm also going to lose that in front, aren't I? Yep. Amen. Huh? Yep. I'm going to speak that to destruction if I allow myself to. Yep. Right? Yep. But he's talking about losing on earth what would be loosed in heaven. Speaking a well word. Okay? A well word. Derek, I give you peace in the name of Jesus Christ that you've never had before in your life. God is going to overshadow you and hover over you and remind you every day that He loves you. Amen. And nothing by any means will hurt you. Amen. Amen. That's what we can do. Yes. Right? That's the power of God right there. Amen. That is the power of God. Okay? When we see a situation on TV, we don't worry about what's going on. We know what happened down there in Texas. It was awful, right? Yes. But now we got to speak a well word. Yes. Lord, you said you had everything in control. I don't know why this happened, but you said you would turn everything to your glory, Father. Yes. Everything, what devil meant for bad, he, you are going to turn it to your glory. So, Father, we're going to have your glory in that situation in Texas, Father. I don't know how you're going to do it, but we're going to have it because we can. And he said we're going to have it. That's what he said. Right? So whatever's going on in your life, if you're hurting, Father, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you said, you said that you're going to turn it to your glory. Yes. Yep. I want my son healed from that affliction of depression. Okay? So I have to start speaking the word forth whether he's here or not. Exactly. Amen. Lord, speak the word only. So he's telling me right now, Dave, speak the word. I can't move unless you you ask me to move. Right? Because he is going to let us have our will. If I choose not to allow him to move, he won't move on my behalf. Amen. We're going to have favor in Kenny. We're going to have God's favor in Kenny. Yeah. We're going to have God's favor. Not mine. Not yours. Not anybody else's. But God's favor. Yes. Yes. Something that's unimaginable. That we would never figure it on. He's going to turn it to his glory. Yes. That's the way God is. Yes. Okay? And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And, and, boy, isn't it great to have this part in there. <laughs> and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall not prevail. Now, is that something we can believe in or not? Yes. Huh? We are his church. Remember what I said earlier. The world, our families, our extended families can't afford for us to be weak. Right. Amen. So we have to start standing on his word so he can build us up so we aren't weak, right? So, can, when the Lord moves in here, and you've seen Him move in here, right? Yes. Yes. Do you not get built up? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. He wants that. Yes. Okay? That's not something we can make happen. Right. That's Him. Yes. Amen. But the reason he's doing that to show you, okay, 
I am able to do anything, anytime, anywhere, any place. Yes. All you got to do is be willing. Right. Amen. Right. <laughs> As we celebrate this weekend, it was for a reflection of people that we have lost. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. When you think about the people that we have lost, all right, whether they have affected you personally or the whether they're affecting you may be in a, in a few generations, okay? But they were a sacrifice, okay? They gave a sacrifice of love towards you yeah. right now. It could have been World War I. They were given a sacrifice of love to you. Yes. Who does that remind you of? Huh? Huh? When, when you, I heard, it was on the news this morning, it was, it was great, but, but the guy said, you know, we knew our job going into it. We knew the risks. They knew the risk for us. Yes. Jesus knew that. Yes, he did. He knew the risk going into it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And he went through it anyway. <clears throat> But there's people left behind, okay, that are suffering and hurting and still hurting. Could be 50 years ago, right? Yeah. They're still hurting. They didn't come home, right? Changed their life forever, right? Yeah. So think about those families, okay? Those families that are left behind and celebrate the, what God's going to do in their life. How about that? Let's turn it to His glory. Yeah. Right. right? Let's celebrate what God's going to do in their lives, in their, their children's lives, and their great-grandchildren's lives, right? right? What He's going to do. Because He said He can. And He's willing and able to do it. All we got to do is trust Him. Amen. Father, we need you. Yes, Father. We need you in this church, Father. We need you in our town, Father. We need you in our county, Father. We need you in our country, Father. Yes. We need you in our world, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, Father, we're asking it right now, Father. And, Father, we're believing that you're going to do what you said you were going to do, Father. Yes. So we're going to claim your circumstances father we're going to claim them all for you lord we're throwing our feet we're throwing ourselves at your feet lord and all of our cares and all of our worry father father we just thank you that you're going to take it and you're going to turn to your glory and we're going to have what you have for us father and we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anybody needs prayer, come on up.